All right, so we've talked about work and energy. Now we have to talk about power. So, and power has a lovely technical definition, but we use it a little differently. So, Chris, what is power lifting? What lifts are we talking about with power lifting? Actually, they're not the Olympic lifts, strength lifts, yeah. So in this case, so, and we think of, you know, big, strong things like bench press and squat and deadlift. So, yeah, so in this case, though, power has a little bit slightly different definition here in physics. It is work divided by the passage of time. And so in this case, it's about doing heavy lifts. That would give you a lot of power, but what else is it about? Yeah, doing it quickly as well means more power. And so in this case, it's worse over time, work over time. So in this case, it's proportional to work, it's inversely proportional to time. So the faster you can do it, the less time it takes, the more power you're generating. So if you look, what's the definition of work? Yeah, force times what? Yeah, force times displacement, which I'll make delta x. And so power could be written as force times delta x over delta t, but what is delta x over delta t? Velocity. So you could also write power as force times velocity. That's where that comes from as well. This is by far the more common definition, but as we'll see, so if this one doesn't work, you should have this one in your back pocket ready to go as well. All right, let's take a look at question number nine here. So number nine is a little conceptual, uh, more than actually doing a calculation, but we'll figure it out. Uh, John ben bench presses 150 kilograms in one and a half seconds, while Larry bench presses 200 kilograms in one second, who generated more power? So let's look at this for a second. John. <laughs> one and a half and one and a half seconds. And then finally, Larry. 200 kilograms in 1.0 seconds is what a workout. Oh, I'm sorry. For those of you that don't know, because you don't hit the gym. <laughs> <laughs> so, bench press is where you lay on your back and you push up. Works out primarily your pecs, but some other minor muscles as okay. well. Good. That's bench press. Sweet. So, John's bench pressing 150 kilograms, which is a healthy bench press. 400 kilograms, a healthy bench press. I cannot do either one of these. Chris, maybe. So, Chad, definitely no. So, but in this case, so who is going to have to do more work, assuming they have the same arm length? So, who does more work, John or, or Larry? Larry's gonna have to do more work. Notice this is not the same thing as work. So, but in this case, work, you could look at it a couple different ways. That's his mass. You could look that he's gonna have to, the force generated is gonna have to at least equal the weight of this, mass times gravity. So, and then a certain displacement will get you the work. Who's doing it less time? Larry as well. So not only is he doing more work, he's also doing it less time. So by default, who's generating more power? Larry, for both reasons. So, and again, we're making a couple assumptions here. This is more of a qualitative question than quantitative, um, but we're making the assumption they have the same displacement, maybe they got the same length arms. I know that's not necessarily true. I had a friend who could bench press 650 pounds and he was just a huge guy with rather short arms. I'm like, it's kind of cheating, I'm just saying. <laughs> Wasn't quite T-Rex, but. <laughs> so, but in this case, Larry's definitely doing more uh, generating more power, more work and less time, more power. Cool. Total qualitative, not really doing a calculation there whatsoever. This is lower. Oh, okay. And so he's actually, yeah, if you have shorter arms, you're actually doing less work to get the weight up and so okay. on and so forth. Thanks. So cool. So, but you know, you get them on the back end. So I have longer oh. arms, so long, skinny arms. And so, but when I go to throw a ball, what's well, true? You're cheating. Why am I cheating now? Doesn't help me in bench press, but throwing a ball it does. So we'll learn this in a little bit, but rotational motion. The further you are away from the center, yeah, I can generate more torque on the ball and stuff. So, all right. Let's go to number 10. So number 10, a go-kart engine delivers 1,500 newtons of force. So while maintaining a velocity of 25 meters per second. In this case, how much horsepower is the engine providing? And you're given a conversion there. One horsepower is 745.7 watts. So in this case, we're not in power and we've got to convert it to horsepower in the end. So, but power here is in watts. I didn't mention that. But if we look then, what must a watt actually be? Newton times meters. Well, that's work. Oh. But <laughs> work, work, work is in what units? 
joules and time in seconds, so it's joules per second. A watt is a joule per second. Everybody cool with that? All right. So in this case, we'll get the same kind of thing here, but is our first definition for power going to help us in this case? Not so much. Our second one, power equaling force times velocity. Two things were given. So, and in this case, we'll get Newton meter per second, which is the same thing as a joule per second. Newton meter is a joule. And joule per second, we just learned is watts. Can anybody get me a power here? Sweet. I'll edit out you guys pulling out your calculators. 37,500. Wait, no. I can't read this. 500. Yeah, 37,500. That's in watts. How do I convert this into horsepower? You just divide it. Fast. Yeah. Total one horsepower equals 740, what? 745.7, my bad. That's a 50.29. Good, 50.29 horsepower. Is horsepower American unit? Yeah, horsepower is American unit. There's also a British horsepower and stuff like that, but this is just plain old horsepower. So Great. Is this, like the car this is the car horsepower, or as some people like to say, the lawnmower horsepower. Take your pick. 